Welcome everybody to linuxacademy.com. My name is Terry and in today's course we continue our preparation for the Linux Foundation Certified System Administrator. This particular video is going to be introducing the basic concepts around bash or shell scripting. Now we'll cover it in a couple of different videos. We'll talk about the setup and how to run basic commands and set up our bash scripts. And then in the subsequent video, we'll talk about conditionals and how to put a, a bunch of that stuff together. So one of the things to keep in mind is that a bash or a shell script is really a text file. It's a text file that contains one or more commands that are run just by the execution of that particular script. So we're going to use the VI or Vim editor, which is covered in another part of our course, to create a shell script. So let's go ahead and start one. We've created a directory called scripts and we're going to change into the scripts directory and you'll see why we created that particular directory momentarily. There's nothing in that directory right now so we're going to, to create a script right now and you can name it literally anything that you want as long as it has appropriate permissions. Although you'll generally see a script, a shell script end with the .sh it's not required that it end with .sh. It just makes it easier to identify from system or binary type commands. So in this case, let's call it test script .sh. Every script must start with a comment that tells the environment what shell to run the script in. Now, every, every Linux and Unix distribution has a shell and you can use the the most generic shell to make your script most compatible all the way back to system 5 type Unix or born Unix implementations by using bin sh. However, in Linux, you'll find 99% of the time what identifies it as a Linux script is it will use the default bash shell. So we start with a comment like we would in any file, the number sign or the pound, and then a bang or the exclamation that says, hey, when you start the script, run within the parameters that are configured under the bash prompt. It's really, you're naming the interpreter that should be used to run the text commands that are underneath of it. So at this point, we're gonna create a very simple shell script that just does a couple of different things. The first thing is it's going to echo. Now, within a shell script, you can actually execute any command that you can execute in the com on the command line from within a script, one right after the other. And when you run that shell script, it will execute them one right after the other. So we're going to say this is line one, echo line two. And as long as you are doing this from within the confines of your favorite editor, you can get things done. Now we've ex echoed line one, line two, line three. We actually can also echo out or cause to happen another command. So for example, I can do ls minus al on the root file system for the root home directory if I have access to it. And then I can exit this particular command. So let's go ahead and save our script. Now, if you'll look at the script right now, I've only got read, write and read, read, execute. So if I go to execute the command here, it's not actually going to run. And you'll see I don't even have command completion. And that's because I don't have the execute bit set for it. Even though it's root, we still have to have the execute bit set, which isn't even set for root. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to do a chmod or change mode 755, which will give me everything for the owner and read execute for everyone else, the test script. And we look at test script, and it test script.sh now shows up in green, which also tells us that it's executable. Now I could do a dot slash, which says execute from this directory, the test script.sh. Test script.sh. And you'll see that if I cap that out, test script.sh, we're echoing line one, two, and three, which we see here. And we're doing a listing of the root file system, 
which we see here. Now, rather than having to type four different lines to do this, we consolidated that all into a script, which we can then run. Now, one of the limitations that we had is we had to do the dot slash test script. And that's because if we look in our environment and we look at the path, there's no entry for the path that would point to this scripts directory so that it's available to run without the dot slash precursor. I, in other words, in order to run it, I'd have to give it a, a, an exact path. But what I can do is I can add my path, I can add the path to it so that I don't have to do that in, in the future. And the way that I can do that is I can say export path equal and then the path itself, a colon, and then root, and scripts. Now if I execute an environment and look at my path, I see user local sbin, user local bin, user sbin, user bin, sbin, bin, and root scripts, so that now if I drop out of that directory and I do test script.sh, then that script should run because it is now in my path. So that's what you want to do, be able to do from, from your directory so that you can execute the script from whichever directory that you want. One of the other items that you'll often see is, particularly if, if it's your system, you may want to create a link between testscript.sh and a, another more user-friendly name so that you don't have to remember that it's testscript.sh every time or, or for example. Let's clear the screen and make sure that there's no command called ts installed on our system. So ts is not a command that's installed on our system and we want to call it, or let's just call it script. So let's execute script. There's a script command. So let's remove TypeScript and we'll just call it test one test one so what I want to do is I want to create a soft link for the test script.sh to test one now I don't have to type test script.sh because test one is pointing to it and I can be in any other directory and just type test one and it'll execute my script so not complex, these are really the basics of setting up a shell script and then linking to it, adding it to your path. So we can create any number of commands that run from within that script one or the other, but the true power of a script comes when we can use what are called conditionals and loops so that we can read files, we can, we can do tests that determine when an application command runs based on whether something is equal, less than, exists or doesn't exist. We'll do that in a subsequent video tying all of that together so you can see a more complex script and understand how conditionals work from within Bash. For shell script basics, that's all there is to it. My name is Terry for Linux Academy.